All right, should we get started? Okay, how to maximize lead flow with PPC and Google ads for generator dealers. So what we're gonna cover today, why paid marketing is key to unlimited scalability in terms of lead flow for your generator business. So we wanna make sure that you're utilizing not just the organic SEO aspect of your website and your overall marketing strategy, but you're also utilizing paid search. There's a lot of opportunity with paid search if it's being done right. Paid marketing strategies that are working best in today's market. We want to talk about Google ads, local service ads, retargeting, remarketing. And it, we have so many more options now. You can get into paid lead, pay per lead with Angie's List or Thumbtack, things like that. Or you can now even get into ads with social media, Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok. How to set up a structure, your pay-per-click marketing campaign for minimum cost per lead and maximum ROI. So I'm going to show you this, this structure, how, how we would do it for generator installations, service contracts, things like that, even, even on the, the electrical, the electrician side of things. And I'm going to show you KPIs, tracking landing pages, campaign structure, everything that you need to know to make sure that you're, you're counting every dollar being spent and where and what's coming back. So who am I and why should you listen to me? Okay, so that's that's my buddy, Rich. He he owns uh, Roman Electric here in New Jersey. I met up with him a few, few, few weeks ago. I took that picture. I have 17 plus years experience in internet marketing. I built a $1 million a year general estate agency, worked directly with more than 50 generated dealers across the country, spoken at mastermind cohorts, event cohort event for successful electrical contractors, the specialized agency for generator dealers now is PowerSource. This is our 100% uh, focus. I also work very closely with a large agency cohort uh, that each has their own specialties, and we're always communicating, sharing what's working, sharing what's not working, even in the Google ad space, the organic SEO space. This stuff changes so frequently, and you probably realize this, that the old ways of marketing, the old ways of building your website is not the way it, used to, not the way it is today. And Google is changing this stuff on a weekly basis. So we tap into this knowledge base of all these other agencies so that we're always learning what's, what's working, what's not. Our mission is to help 100 generator dealers double or maybe even triple their revenue. My team of five people, including myself, are experts in content creation and digital marketing, ad management, social media, web development, web design, graphic arts, everything we need to do to execute a, you know, a pretty, pretty powerful program. So jumping right into it, Excel, accelerated growth model. So this is what we, this is what we strive for on a regular basis. We're always focusing on driving leads, maximizing conversion and optimizing results. So when we drive leads, we work the organic SEO, we work the paid search, we work the database, we maximize conversion by massaging the website, massaging the reputation, checking in on those reviews, making sure that's all happening. And there's a process in place for that. Building in automation, five to seven touch points for prospects and leads coming in before they actually book. Optimizing results, showing you total spend, showing you actual results and actual leads and building an ROI for future forecasting on, on all of the entire program on a regular basis. So today what we're focusing on is the paid search aspect of the drive lead. So each one of these are very comprehensive. And I have a, a few webinars in the past that I've done for organic SEO. And we talked about database and some results. So you can, you can check those out. If you're curious about any of those additional items, you could just let me know. This is just another way to look at it, focusing right here on this, on this paid search, this paid section. And this overall is a digital dominance method. This is just another way to look at everything that you can kind of do to dominate your digital ex exposure and, and all the different aspects that you want to be in, in order to generate those results and build better lead flow and just layer on top of layers of everything that you're doing, organic, paid search, branding management, or retargeting automation, everything, everything on top of everything. So why paid search should be part of your internet marketing strategy. So one reason is to start showing up quickly. So a lot of what you do with the organic, creating content, doing blogs, building the website, managing a Google profile, 
local local SEO, things like that. That takes some time for it to start taking effect. Google ads, local service ads, and running pay per lead ads gets you that top ranking quickly, almost almost immediately, right? You can show up as often as possible where your customers are looking. So when they're searching, they're seeing you on the top. You show up for non-geo modified terms, electrician, generator, home standby generator, backup power. So where your website is failing to show your, your ads or show your listing, the Google ads can fill that gap and get you additional ranking um, for those, those different spots. And unlimited scalability. You can keep building campaigns and keep building ad groups. You can watch your key terms and search terms, and you can make sure that your ads are constantly running and getting better and better as, as we go. So as we get into paid search, we're going to talk about the top section here, the local service ads, the sponsored ads, how it relates to your website, and how it relates to these landing pages that we're talking about for the ad. So Here's this graphic again, but now it's more based on retargeting and automation. So these are all the different things that you can do with, with paid search. Okay, so back in the day, I guess 10 or 20 years ago, it was just Google Ads. It's all we had, right? But now it's Google Ads, it's local service ads, it's retargeting, it's social media, it's paid leads, paid, paid per lead and directory sort of sites and setups. Here's a different way to look at it. And this is this is what I firmly believe that we still need a strong organic foundation in place before you run ads. So you want to have a great website. You want to have great content. You want to have the forms, the call to actions, the phone number in the right place. You want it to be mobile responsive and mobile friendly. You want to have all of these pieces in place because it's, it's like having a a store with no product in it and your all your advertising is sending people to the store and nothing's happening. So you want to make sure that it's happening on your website. Have, make sure you have this foundation of all of your organic pieces in place before you move on to the next level, which is this paid search and local service ads. This is definitely layering up. And right here is like the sweet spot after you've got an organic foundation. And right after that, this line is actually the break point. This is where the smaller companies, one and a half million, two million a year in revenue should stop at the retargeting and automation. So retargeting is essential because it's going to help keep you top of mind when people hit your ads on your website and then they're distracted and they leave and they're seeing, seeing your ads uh, across the internet on a regular basis and then clicking back into your website. And then automation in place to reach out to them, even if it's automatic and not, not really manual. Beyond that, then you can step into paid directories, pay per lead, Angie's List, Thumbtack, eLocal, or whatever. And then even beyond that, social ads, Facebook ads, TikTok, YouTube, this is more of a brand strategy. So 5 million and up, these bigger companies should make sure that you're, you have that sort of brand strategy in place, but this is how you want to layer it. So local service ads, local service ads is the Google guarantee. I don't know if anybody's heard of this. Just give me a little LSA in the, in the, in the text if, if anybody's currently running local service ads. Um, local service ads are designed for local companies. Harry's doing it, nice. It's been beneficial for some of our electricians on the electrician side. It hasn't really shown generator leads, so to speak most likely because the local service setup doesn't really give you that option to, hey, show my ads for generators. So it's something called restore power is one of the options. So as an electrician, you can have all of these other things and you're going to start getting leads for recessed lighting, for light switches and for ceiling fans and for outlets and all these other things that come with this local service package and restore power is one of them. But this puts you at the top. Whenever anything is something is electric rate related, and generators are bringing these ads up, then you need to be there. So local service ads is great and a good thing, good thing to have. And I'll, I'll get into the details on that. So this is the very top part up there is where the local service ads come up. Obviously, this is the very top above the fold. That's not even a term anymore because there's there's so little above the fold these days that people are now kind of forced to, to scroll down a bit. But local service ads, 
get set up with this. I think you need to play in this game. You know, it's going to just add that extra layer. It's not all that expensive. Not that I know of anyway, Harry, it hasn't been expensive for us. You know, I have an electrician that does every little thing. He spends maybe seven, $800 a month and he gets a lot of leads with local service ads. Um, but to get set up, you kind of have to go through a background check and you have to go through all these other little nuances through Google to get your account properly uh, engaged and then get you into rotation. You can dial in your service area, your profile, you set your budget, then you mark your jobs as booked. So local service ads will, when you get a lead, it'll you'll see a whole list of all your leads in a dashboard and you can mark those jobs as booked and Google will actually decide based on their algorithm what is good and what is not, what actually converts and what doesn't. All you have to do is when something converts, when Google thinks something converts, but it doesn't, just, just deal with that dispute. Just dispute it and Google will, will reverse it. If you don't deal with these disputes and if you don't mark these jobs as booked, they'll kind of put you on a non-responsive and then they'll start putting other companies in the rotation and you'll kind of start falling out. So it's important to have somebody aside managing that dashboard, managing all of those pieces for local service ads so that you're, you're, you're managing it properly. The better you get at it and the more you, the more you deal with the dispute and you book jobs, the more Google is going to start referring you. And target an 85% booking rate. So with everything that comes in, that's kind of like the sweet spot. 85% of everything that's that, that's coming in, you want to book, that will keep you in the running with, with Google and LSA. So the next thing I want to go into is Google Ads. Um, so Google Ads used to be used to be very simple. And it seems like it's very simple. And the dashboard makes it look very easy. But it is also very easy to do it wrong. So, and here's a few reasons why most of these ad campaigns fail. I mean, a lot of you guys, maybe you have some interior in, in-house marketing people, but a lot of you guys have used agencies in the past, whatever your experiences is, I've, I've heard the whole gamut. I, I'm spending all this money. I'm not getting the leads. I don't know what is going on or yeah, I'm, I'm getting a few leads and it's, it sounds pretty good, but what, what is the actual, you know, how much are you actually spending and how much are you actually getting back? And when these, when these ads aren't working, there's usually several reasons why. Fail to understand that Google ads auction process and the generator industry, it's very important to know how that auction process works, how the recommended bids, ad spend works, and <clears throat> with regards to the generator industry. So if you're building the ads properly, Google's recommendation based on search volume and keywords is gonna, is gonna give you an accurate spend. And if you can meet that budget, for that spend, then your ads will kind of be in in a right in the right line for the maximum exposure. They set up only one ad group for all services. So electrical generators, emergency services, all in one ad group. Click it, link out. So this is one of the one of the reasons why this would this would fail. And I think that that might be a little obvious, um, you know. And they don't use specific text ads and landing pages for the groups of keywords. So when you set up an ad. For electrical generators, emergency services, where does that ad link to? Usually they're sending it to the homepage. And there's no strong call to action or offer on that landing page. If you're going back to the homepage, you have the phone number on the top of the site, but it's also just a mishmash of, you know, your company, about you, the services that you offer, and it's nothing real specific. So if you look at it this way, Electrical, emergency electricians, generators, generator repairs, electrical upgrades, recess lighting, all of this, and it points to your homepage, you can see where this fails. You can see the, the disconnect here between how this ad is set up and this campaign is set up and where, where the users are going. So let's talk about how to set up the structure. And I wouldn't even think about spending another penny until you have conversion tracking in place. So conversion tracking is an absolute must. We want to go, we want to see impressions, clicks, calls from form fills, lead to customer. Okay, so if we have 196 impressions and we have six clicks and we have two calls or two form fills, that leads to two leads. Okay, one of those calls can maybe drop off. Maybe the guy was looking for uh, a branded generator that you don't, service or install. 
<clears throat> that could drop off too. But here we got two calls, leads to two leads, ends up with one customer. Okay, so if you spent $60 to get those six clicks, your revenue could literally be $14,500 if we're closing a generator install. So the math checks out, but you need to be tracking this so that you can see all of these, these things happen. So here are some of the tracking essentials. Dynamic number swapping with different phone number for PPC traffic versus organic or direct traffic, which means your website has a phone number that you're tracking and your, your PPC landing pages, your pay-per-click landing pages has a different phone number that you're tracking. And what do I mean by tracking? Well, you can use services like CallRail to create oh, a whole list of phone numbers in your service area, in your area code that you can use throughout your website. The calls are recorded, the calls are tracked, date and time, phone numbers, all that caller ID is built right in. And you can see how this is coming in. You can just, just by thinking about that, you know, you get some ideas on, okay, that, that gives me some good ideas of how I can, how I can track this. You can even set up a keyword pool with dynamic number swapping so that you can track phone calls back to the keyword and campaign. This is a little bit more advanced. We don't really, we don't get in this in this this granular, but what you could do is you could set up a, maybe five different phone numbers synced up with five different Google ad groups and set up the dynamic number swapping so that whenever you get a phone call, you can check the date and time. You can go back to those ads and look at the clicks, those date and times, and you know what ads are actually being triggered for that lead. So it, it is really granular, but you can get all the way down to the bottom of that. Web form tracking, the contact forms should be carefully set up so that you know where they're coming from. A lot of forms, a lot of form builders, even WordPress has the ability to track its, its refer, referring page. So you can see the first name, last name, phone number and everything, and what page that form fill came from. <clears throat> Otherwise you can just create a whole nother form that if that is, gets, gets filled out, you know where it's coming from and converging tracking built into the AdWords campaign to determine which ad group generated the lead. So now the campaign must be broken into smaller ad groups, targeting the various services that you provide so that text ads match what the person has typed. So generator installation, this is a main campaign. This is one campaign. And then an ad group for each one of these, standby generators, generator service, generator repair, OEM warranty renewals, generator inspection services, whatever you, whatever you do, whatever service you offer specifically for generator installation, have an ad group for each one. You don't have to have a landing page for each one. Ideally, you, you wanna have a landing page for each one, but you do need separate ad groups so that you can identify the key terms and the search terms for each one so that your generator installation ads aren't popping up when somebody's just searching, you know, my generator needs repair. And now you now you kind of don't know what's happening with those with those ads. But if you've got separate ad groups, you can see the difference um, in how that all changes. Set up a brand campaign. So the brand campaign has a few ad groups underneath generators, generator electrical, general electrical services those two ad groups under your brand so that when people are searching for you, you don't want your competitors to pop up. A lot of competitors are, are doing that. They're gonna actually set your, your company name as a search term so that when somebody's searching for you, your competitor pops up. So just make sure you get a brand campaign in place so that your company comes up when somebody's searching on top. And then another campaign separate from generators could be electrical services. And then an ad group focusing on panel upgrades, recess lighting, kitchen and bath. I would, I would do a uh, separate landing page for those at least. With the generator side, I would do a landing page for generator installations and generator service separately. So I wanna make sure we have a strong understanding of keyword match types. Don't forget about negative keywords either. So here's just a quick little example I pulled from a, a, a painting uh, company. Um, but this is a great graphic to show you, okay, how, how tight you want to get your keywords. So 
Google ads will, will show you what search terms are being searched that bring up your ads. So a lot of the times we're seeing people looking for mobile generators or portable generators, and you don't do those. You don't sell them, you don't rent them. So you wanna make sure that you have a negative keyword on the, on the broad match for the word portable or mobile or whatever. This way, anything on the broad match level that has the word mobile or portable or means mobile or portable won't show your ads. This is how you optimize your ads and get the most out of your spend. So exact match means this is exactly what your ads will show for. <clears throat> phrase match means that anything that means this phrase will show. Okay, this is the reverse for negative. So if you set this as a phrase match negative term, anything that means buy interior paint, anything for buying on that phrase match, because Google will understand that, means don't show it. And then on the broad match, it's anything that has those key terms in it won't show. So this is just this is just how to dial in on the key terms and the negative key terms. Anybody have any questions on this this particular thing? Just put it in the chat. Now this is just an example to show you that we had our ads showed up for a search sportsman 3500 watt generator. So we want to make sure that that never shows an ad. So we have a broad match on the word sportsman. So anything containing sportsman will not show our ads. And then standby generator install, we want to keep that. So that's that's in our ad group, and that will give us a phrase match or a close variant. This is just how Google is Google breaks it up. So you need to write compelling text ads now that resonate with the customer type, what the customer type, and entice them to click versus you know the competition. So you can see, now I'm going to put my glasses on. You could see free estimate right away. Backup generator, house generator, hookup, free estimate right away. You can scan that, see 100% financing, call phone number. That click to call is tracked. That phone number is tracked to that ad. Text us full house generator, free estimate right away, 100% financing, $500 off installation. So those are those are just really good uh, text ads that will that will resonate and hopefully get get the attention. And that little form fill too, Google knows if somebody's more likely to fill out that form or click your link, that form pops up a form right there over top of the ad and and then you you just you, you fill it out and that that lead goes straight into Google. So some of the most important KPIs to be aware of. You want to look at your total spend, how much money you're spending on these on these ads, the average cost per click. Okay, this is important. Google will show you how many clicks you get in a month. And then you just do the math on how much you spent. Your average cost per lead. So do the math on that. If you just divide how much how much money you spent versus, you know, divided by your leads, you get the average cost per lead. And in our case, generator installs will generally be anywhere between $100 and $250 per lead. So just to kind of give you an idea of what you're probably most likely going to be spending for, for some of these leads. Installations, replacements, and the repairs and maintenance service, about $85 to $150. Installations, replacements, about $100 to $200 per lead. Electricals, like $35 to $75. We aren't running too many, but it seems to be steady in that range, $35, $75 a lead. And you also want to track your return on investment. Just to give you an idea, we track all these numbers. We look at the leads, the total spend, you know, just a piece of this dashboard to give you an average cost per lead based on what total investment is. This is a this is not a general install. This is generators, electrical. There's mishmash about everything, about of a few things. And now if you can track true ROI, even better. So you can work directly integrated into Service Titan to look at, okay, which actual leads and prospects came in for SEO and track it all the way to the revenue conversion and then look at your PPC, track it all the way to the revenue conversion. Yeah, there's, you, can, you can get even more advanced with, these, with some of these dashboards so that you can project your ROI via Service Titan. And there are, other, there are others too. So now 
you have to land visitors on a solid, well thought out page on your site built to convert. So if you look at this site, the first thing you see here is this form on your desktop, your phone number, your click to request a call and our offers at the top. So here's the thing about the landing pages. We don't have, there's no navigation on here. It's, it's the, the people clicking on the ads are different from the people who are looking or doing some research and checking you out, reading your content, checking out your pages, going from page to page, leaving, coming back later. The people that are looking and clicking on the ads are more in a hurry or they're more, they're a little further down the buying line than those people that are doing the, the, the regular searching. So we want to make sure that it's a quick conversion. Oh, my power was out for two days. I finally got it back on. I need to do something about this. Generator install power and boom, there's my ad. Click it and right there on top. And they're usually on their phone. You can almost throw away the desktop version, but they're usually on their phone and get a free, get a free estimate right now. Boom. Click that, it calls it calls up right away or it takes them right to a form. And even a, a little scroll down will give them a little bit more into it. You know, here's some of our reviews, here's some of our, here's what we're offering. Uh, here's some more information on generators. Here's some of our, our team, a little bit about us. Here's some of the testimonials and reviews. Here's some of the brands that we work. So this 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 page keeps scrolling down, but the the main premise of this is to give them what they're looking for right away and quickly. The other reason why you need to have this well thought out is this helps with our quality score so of the ad. So if the ad is done right, has all these aspects in it, and if the landing page is done right and has the conversion aspects in it, and it's got further content and further reading, and it's, it's dialed in to getting this conversion, then Google is going to increase the quality score on the ads essentially pushing you up above anybody else that is running ads as well. So the better your landing pages are and your ads are, the more you're going to come up over your competition, even with paid spend. Google just is all, Google is only focused on the best user experience. So this is all, this is all part of it. Here's just another page that we've done similar layout. I mean, we, we have a, done a little bit of AB testing on some of these sites, these pages, this page and this layout seems to be working great. So, you know, we, we stick with what's good and, we, we roll up from back and forth between, between clients. Works good for them. Let's do it for them. <laughs> so here's some questions that you can ask your existing PPC provider. If anybody is currently running, uh, I know somebody is not here, but somebody is currently running some ads with another company. Harry, what are the conversion metrics on these pages? These, these pages. Yeah, so the conversion is probably somewhere around, I don't want to give you a number that I don't know right off the top of my head. I don't have that number. Yeah, I can get that for you though, if you're interested in knowing more about that, but I don't want to just throw a number out. Okay, so how much my budget will go to Google AdWords spend versus management fees? So we want to know how much your spend versus management fees. How much, how much am I paying for this? Sometimes they say it's like, oh, don't worry about that. It's all blended. So it's not all blended. You, you you pay for a fee for them to do it. Sometimes it could be a percentage of how much you spend, but know what that is. and Or it's just a flat fee to manage up to a certain amount. And then how much you actually, actually put into the ads themselves. What type of tracking will you be putting in place? Do you have, do you do Google ads call and web form conversion tracking? If you don't have a web and call conversion tracking that pulls into AdWords, you will be at a major disadvantage versus the competition. Will you delineate PPC calls versus organic calls? Very important to know the difference. Most, most agencies do know the difference, but you do want to make sure that you're tracking separately. How will we track our key performance indicators? And will I be provided with a live dashboard? So a key metric, average cost per lead generated. Will you be setting up specific landing pages for each ad groups or will the traffic be directed to the homepage? And if you're driving traffic to landing pages, how are those pages optimized for conversion? So like I, like I was just kind of going through it, we have a phone number, we have the form, we have some other immediate, immediate things to kind of get them pulled over the line. And if you even scroll down on some of those pages, you'll see some of the, some additional CTAs that, that get them to call or fill out a form.
Will you be leveraging all of the ad extensions to make my text ads stand out in the search results? So that's, that's Google provides with all these little bells and whistles that you can add onto these sites and, and take advantage of to make the ads and, and the whole campaigns even a little bit better. And then what are our targets in terms of cross per lead and return on investment? So how much are you spending? What's what, what the impressions are, what the clicks are, what the leads are, what the revenue is for those converted leads. So you should be getting all of that stuff. You should ask these questions. You should make sure that you see all of this happening. Like I said, running Google ads is not as easy as, as they make it seem. Finally, after Google ads, we want to talk about retargeting and automation. So retargeting our leads that are not followed up with are within 15 minutes go cold. The average customer must be followed up within five to seven times before booking. And today's consumer prefers to interact via text message versus phone call or, or email. So I want to make sure we've got automation in place for, for each of those. So remar remarketing, if that's in place properly, is basically just when you have a visitor hit your site, we drop a cookie or a pixel on their browser that tracks their, their movement. And then when they leave your site, the Google will see that they're, they've been tracked and will start dropping their your ads in on some popular sites they might be seeing, ESPN.com or, or, or whatever. Clicking that ad takes them back to your website. So these are the little ads that follow you around. Important to have in place, especially when those touch points and you've got high vol a volume of com competition in the area, you want to make sure that you're, you're the one being, being seen and repeatedly seen. This is just how some of this remarketing looks. Uh, just my screen. Okay, so we've got, you know, a, a banner ad at top. We have a, a side, a side ad on the side. We've got some body tech, body ads for some of the articles that you're reading. These are just five different sized ads that show up, and you can schedule these. You could also build an audience for for uh, existing customers and. Uh, Google will actually create a like audience and maybe even start retargeting some people uh, based on past visits and also goes through uh, Google Analytics that way. And then the next thing is automation. So if you don't have a really good structure in place for, you know, from the office after people are calling or a prospect calls, well, what does your process look like there? So going back to that five to seven touch points before people actually book a project, book a deal with you, what's the process of that first lead phone call and then finally closing the deal? So we have some automation in place where a, a text message goes right out. Thank you for sending us the form. We got your information. You could even use AI to actually ask more questions or to use uh, a chat on your website so that people can ask questions. AI can respond. Uh, you can train it really, really well to do that. Automate emails that go out, automate text messages that go out and have everything kind of funneled. Okay, so uh, is there any questions? I, th I think I've, I kind of went through it, not quickly. I did about 40 minutes, not bad. Does anybody have any questions on this? Thank you, Harry, <laughs> except for that one question. <laughs> appreciate it. Yes, I appreciate it. You know, and if if you guys like what I'm talking about and you, you know you feel like hey I, we seem to kind of know what we're talking about and you want us to help you with any of this want us to to work with you on any of this we'd be happy to have a quick discovery call and talk to you about your goals and your revenue and, and what's happening in your industry or our industry generators I'm talking to some guys over on the West Coast I talked to guys in the South mostly in Texas lately some other other people in Alabama and up in the Northeast. So we're kind of we're kind of running the whole the whole country here in, in terms of what's going on. And it's, it's it's been great. So, you know, we'd love to talk more about you. And hey, if you're interested in, in jumping on a podcast too, I'm developing a new podcast for generator dealers and business owners. So that'd be really great. And I just need to have like five recordings before I can launch the channel. Um, just shoot me an email, shoot me a message. Let me know if you're interested and uh, you know we can go from there so so yeah and if you're even more interested we're we're giving out a free acceleration session we'll do an analysis of your online visibility custom keyword list and most important search terms actually i think you can download that on my site a ranking report online directory listings all that other stuff so
And yes, Tim, I will send out an email to everybody with the replay probably tomorrow. So you guys can speed through it and check out some, some more of the highlights. But if you have any questions, please shoot me an email or, or shoot me a contact or give me a ring. Um, happy to talk at any time. So thanks everybody for coming. Appreciate it.